The topic for today's special feature webinar is chemical facility inventories. A few notes about chemical facilities in ChemResponder before we get underway with some of uh, the interface. The intention for this capability is to empower ChemResponder organizations to upload chemical facility information in ChemResponder, share those facilities with partners, and display the facilities on web and mobile event maps for situational awareness and to benefit response decision making. In terms of what can be uploaded to chemical facilities, we'll touch on all of those different things today. They include chemical inventories, documents, points of contact, floor plans, and other facility details like maximum number of occupants and other sort of facility elements. I want to note up front that currently facilities can only be added individually to ChemResponder. However, we are currently working on a bulk facility upload capability using an EPA and NOAA XML Tier 2 data standard. Uh, I'll also note that we have explored various options for uh, what are called APIs, application programming interfaces. So that's something that's also under concept development to support bulk upload of facilities, uh, either through an Excel sheet or something like that, uh, or uh, on sort of the back end through other applications. We'll start with how we add facilities chemical facilities to a ChemResponder organization. All chemical facilities are added in the organization space of the ChemResponder website. So it can only be done from the web application. It isn't something that you can do from the mobile application. To get to the facilities page where you can start adding facilities, you'll navigate to your organization space. You'll select facilities on the side navigation and then add a facility in the upper right corner. On the Add Facility page, at the top, you'll be presented with a general information section. So this will ask for fields like the name of the facility, any description you'd want to provide, type and sharing mode. I want to particularly note the type field. So when you are choosing type for your facility, be sure that you select the chemical storage type. If you do not type your facility as chemical storage, then the interface will not give you options for adding the chemical inventory later on. When you're choosing the scenario in this general information section, I want to note the default scenarios option. So you can choose one or more of these default event scenarios when you're adding a facility. And events that you create with a selected scenario will automatically include this facility when the event is created. So for example, if I'm creating an event and I choose an event scenario that is chemical facility or is fuel spill or lost or stolen chemicals in this, in this instance, the facility here in this case will automatically be pulled into that event that you've created. As you proceed down the form, You'll come next to the chemical storage facility details section. Um, again, this section will only present if you chose the chemical storage type. So again, just making sure that you've typed it appropriately. Uh, but here you can supply things like facility identifiers, um, a TRI, RMP facility ID, max number of occupants, uh, all these fields available for you here. The next section in the add facility form will be the contact section. You can add contacts here um, by using that add contact button on the right side of this header. After clicking that add contact button, you're presented with this modal. You'll then add the contacts information and click continue. So all kinds of fields that you can fill out here, including the type of contact, of course, their name, title. You can add any number of emails or phone numbers for this contact. Once you've added contacts, you can remove any contacts or go back and edit them. The table here will give you the option. After you've added some facilities to your organization space, you can view them on the facilities table. You can click on the magnifying glass in the row next to any of those facilities to go into the details view for that site. Note that you can, of course, edit the facility. So if you need to go back and modify contacts, or update the chemical inventory. Um, that can all be done uh, retroactively. You can delete or disable the facility from the details page as well. 
disabling a facility means it cannot be included on events. Uh, there is also an export option if you want to export the facility information to an Excel, KML, uh, or a shape file. You have that option here. At the bottom of the details page for the facility, you're going to see some additional tables where we can view and manage chemicals, floor plans, and documents. So we'll talk about each of these three things. When you open the chemicals drop down, you can view any chemical inventory that's currently on the facility. You can modify this table's columns using that choose visible columns button. So if we want to add to this table things like maximum amount or average daily amount, again, we can add those additional columns with that choose visible columns option. When you want to add new chemicals to the facility's inventory, we'll use the add chemical button to open the interface to add chemicals. It'll bring me to this add chemical page. The top is a general information section. I'll select the chemical to be added and select any additional check boxes as appropriate. Is it an extremely hazardous substance, EHS? I can indicate its state, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas. Trade secret, whether it's blow reporting threshold, and if it's um, uh, subject to other state or local requirements. Going down the form, you have a hazard information section. You can select any number of physical or health hazards. The bottom section of the add chemical form is the inventory and storage information section. Here you can provide storage amount and conditions information. When you've completed this bottom section, you can choose save changes in the bottom right of the form and you'll have added your chemical. Back on the facility details page, floor plans can be added to the facility as well. When you add a floor plan, the purpose is to be able to plot data and annotate those floor plans using the indoor data collection feature. I won't dive into too much detail today on the indoor data collection feature. That said, we do have a webinar, the Indoor Monitoring Enhancements webinar that was delivered in February of this year. Uh, it is in the resource library, also at our YouTube page, if you want to view that there. You can also add documents to the facility using the Manage button on the far right side of this table. Clicking that Manage button will bring you to a page that looks like this. Here, you can add documents or delete documents. All standard file types are accepted, anything from a Word, Excel, PDF, PowerPoint. Standard video and image files can all be uploaded. That was a bit on how we add facilities to our organization spaces. We'll now talk about showing chemical facilities on web and mobile event maps. So you can display these as facility icons in your event. We touched on this earlier, but again, facilities can be automatically added to ChemResponder events you create if one of the default event scenarios on the facility matches the event scenario you provide on the create event form. So again, we discussed this example earlier. If, for example, in this event, I choose the chemical facility scenario, this facility will be automatically included in this event. Facilities can also be added manually to your event. Here I've got one facility on this event, the demo chemical site with floor plans. If you want to add additional facilities to the event, you need to first make sure you are in the event space. And then on the side navigation, you can click the configuration drop down menu. That'll expose the facilities option and the Add Facility button is in the upper right corner. When you come to this Add Facility page, uh, you'll be presented with two options at the very top. The Create New option lets you create an ad hoc facility for this event. So if it doesn't already exist in an organization space, you can create an ad hoc facility here. You can also choose Select from Existing. So this will draw from facilities that are currently in your organization space. You can search by facility name. You could also type in the abbreviation of the organization whose facility you want to add. So in this example, I just want to be presented with all of the DCO, that demo, demo chem organization, organization's uh, facilities, and they'll show for me here. You'll select the facility, and its information will display. Going down the form, you can choose a status. You can optionally choose a go live date. Another option for you is to add hours of operation, not a required field here, but it's at your disposal if that's helpful. 
you'll now notice that the Smith & Sons facility now displays in the table with the owning organization in that far right column. I'll note that the demo chem site with floor plans, this was a facility we created ad hoc on the event, so it doesn't have an owner on this event. That's why that field is blank. When you're on the event map itself on the website, all of the facilities you've got on the event can be displayed. And so from the map, you can open your facilities layer, or excuse me, your layers menu, and make sure the facilities option is toggled on. That will make the facilities layer menu available to you. This facilities layer menu will show all facilities in a list form, and the map will display all the facilities as icons on your map. So in this example, we see the facility icon. I'll just note that that four that's hanging off the icon signifies there are four indoor data records that have been collected on the facility's floor plan. So that's what that number is signifying. Again, you can refer to that February webinar if you want to learn more about the indoor data collection feature. If I actually click on this facility icon, it will open up the quick details view uh, on the left side menu. So we can see more information about the facility. You'll note there are additional options here under the quick details for viewing additional details, exporting the facility's data, viewing its floor plans, or creating an assignment for this facility. If I click the additional details option, there that we saw on the quick details menu. This will open up a side menu on the right hand side of the map with additional facility information, including the chemical inventory. So you can see the chemical inventory right here from the map view, again, in addition to the full details for this site. We'll now talk a bit about viewing facilities on the mobile application map. So your facilities can also be viewed from this mobile application map, both within events and outside of your event. And again, this is the Chem Responder mobile application I'm referring to here. Uh, it is available in the iOS store. It is also available for Android and Windows. So any of those platforms we support, and it's free, available for you in the store. From within an event, I can choose the map option on the lower right corner of the interface. On this map, you'll see your facility icon. And we can click those facility icons to display its name. If you don't see your facility icons, you want to make sure your facilities layer is toggled on. So in the upper right corner, you can click the filter icon. That'll bring you to the map filters page. And then again, just make sure the facilities option is toggled on. You can view additional details for any facility by clicking the details button. You can also view details for any of the chemical stored at the facility by clicking on a chemical record on the details page for that site. So on the far left screenshot there, we see that we can click the little information button in the iOS interface. It'll present an option to view details at the bottom of the screen there. It'll then bring me to the details page for this site. And you can see the chemical inventory is displayed there. And again, I can click on any of those chemical records to view additional details about that chemical. Also worth noting that when you click on that information button for a facility, if you select, instead of view details, the navigate to location option, the map will prompt you to choose one of your device's mapping applications to navigate you to the site. You can also view all of your facilities for your organizations outside of any event context. And so when I'm at the event list, you can find the map option after opening the side menu, and it'll bring you to this organizational map. Just as in the event space, we have a filter option on this map. If you click that filter option, you can filter your map actually by organization and chemical. So, for instance, if I only wanted to display the facilities for a specific organization uh, on the map, I can, do, uh, I can do that. Or if I only want to show facilities that contain certain chemicals in their inventory, like ammonia, I can filter the map that way as well here on mobile. So, again, uh, a few things that are upcoming with chemical facilities that I want to point out. I touched on this a bit at the outset just to drive that home. 
We are in the process right now of adopting NOAA and EPA's XML Tier 2 data standard to support bulk uploads of facilities to chem responder organizations. So I include the hyperlink here if you're interested in viewing more about this data standard. But applications like Tier 2 Submit and ePlan, they support an option to export facilities in this XML standard, which users will then be able to use to upload to uh, their facility information to ChemResponder once our development is complete. So that development we're looking to accomplish in the summer, uh, so it should be released uh, sometime in late summer. So the implication of that, just to be clear, is that rather than going through the interface and having to add facilities individually, uh, if you have an application that can support this data standard, this XML data standard, you can simply export the facilities from that application and upload it seamlessly into ChemResponder. Um, I also touched briefly before on other API solutions that we're exploring. So this would allow for basically automated connections between databases on the back end uh, to support facility information sharing between ChemResponder and other applications you might already be using to store your facility information. So if you're interested in furthering that discussion, uh, I'm happy to follow up. If something does come up and you want to reach out to us later on, please shoot us an email, support at chemresponder.net. Our resource library is also at your disposal. 